Our topic today is lateral stability. Uh, lateral motion consists of rolling moment. Um, rolling moment is achieved by differential deflection of the aileron control surface. Uh, we'll discuss more on the aileron deflection later when we talk about roll control. Note that a positive rolling is rolling right wing down. The lateral stability derivative is Cl beta, which is the derivative of the rolling moment Cl. Um, um, uh, it's actually the derivative of the rolling moment coefficient Cl with respect to the side slip angle beta. Note that when the aircraft rolls, it also begins to side slip. For example, when the aircraft bangs right wing down, it would your nose to the left. A positive rolling moment also create a positive side slip, just like what's shown uh, in this diagram. You can't see it directly, but you can imagine it is rolling its right wing down, causing its nose to your to the left. So we have here a positive side slip angle. Um, now, an airplane that has static roll stability would develop a restoring moment when it is disturbed from wing level attitude. Uh, equilibrium or trim condition is when rolling moment is zero and side slip angle is zero. Let's take a look at uh, the graph of the rolling moment coefficient CL versus the side slip angle beta. The origin here signifies a trim condition where CL equals to zero and beta equals to zero. For a statically stable aircraft, we want the slope CL beta to be less than zero. Let's take a look at the plot of the statically stable aircraft, this one right here. Suppose the aircraft is flying at wings level flight, and then it experiences roll upset, causes a positive side slip angle, meaning the aircraft experiencing a positive roll and it rolls right wing down. The aircraft would then generate a restoring moment to reduce this bank angle to bring it back to wings level flight, meaning it develop a negative rolling moment to roll its left wing down and right wing up. So CL beta less than zero indicates a statically stable aircraft in rolling motion. Let's look at the aircraft's lateral stability by its individual components. If we derive the rolling moment equation and then rewrite it as the dimensionless rolling moment coefficient equation, we get this set of equation. And it is described as a function of the side slip angle beta. To determine lateral static stability, we look at the parameter CL beta, which is the lateral static stability derivative. Um, the CL beta can be computed by adding up the CL beta contribution from the aircraft's dihedral, the wing's position mounted on the fuselage, the wing's sweep, and the vertical tail. Let's discuss about these terms individually. Uh, the dihedral angle is the upward angle from the horizontal of the wing. Dihedral wing contribution to lateral stability is stabilizing, while anhedral wing that have a downward angle like this is destabilizing. It's common for many aircraft to have wings with dihedral angle of about 1 to 3 degrees. Um, these diagrams show how a dihedral wing is stabilizing. Um, let's start with here at wings level flight, lift produced on both wings are equal or equally distributed. If the aircraft rolls and experiences side slip like this, where the relative wind is coming from one side because of the dihedral angle, the low wing would have a higher angle of attack. It would have seen a higher angle of attack than the high wing. Therefore, the relative wind 
that strikes the low wing would create a higher lift uh, than this wing. So this would then push the lower wing to restore the aircraft uh, to wings level condition. Uh, this phenomenon is what we call the dihedral effect. The effect of dihedral uh, is to produce a rolling moment tending to return the airplane to wings level flight. The CL beta contribution from a dihedral wing is given by this equation. It is a function of the lift coefficient, the di dihedral angle, and the wing's taper ratio. Notice that the uh, CL beta due to dihedral is a negative number. In other words, if the aircraft is laterally stable, it experiences a positive side slip, it will create a negative rolling moment. Uh, i.e. if it side slips to the right, it will induce a left wing um, down roll. Here's the contribution from the wing position on the fuselage, whether it is mounted at the top, at the middle, or at the bottom of the fuselage. By default, high wing is stabilizing while low wing is destabilizing. We can explain this by studying the cross flow effect. We can study the cross flow effect around the fuselage uh, when we have a side wind due to side slipping. So this aircraft with a high wing here, um, when it drops its right wing down, um, so the relative flow is coming from its right. The flow would go from under the wing to over the fuselage and then back down under the other wing. This would give faster wind under the upward wing, causing the pressure to drop under this wing. So this wing experiences decreased lift, causing this wing to drop. So a similar but opposite explanation can be used to describe how this low wing configuration is destabilizing. So in general, a high wing placement is stabilizing, a mid wing placement is neutral, while low wing placement is destabilizing. Let's take a look at the contribution from wing sweep. So positive wing sweep is laterally stabilizing. Positive wing sweep is also called swept back wing when airplane is side slipping. Um, the, the low wing, which is this one, um, uh, the wing towards the side slip experiences higher velocity. We're talking about the normal velocity perpendicular to the wing's leading edge. Compared to the other wing that experiences smaller normal velocity. So the higher velocity on the low wing would increase the lift on this wing. So the aircraft would roll back to wings level position. Uh, here, here's an empirical equation for describing CL beta contribution from the wing sweep. And notice it's also a negative number. Let's now take a look at the contribution from the vertical tail. We look at the aircraft's center of gravity location to know whether the tail is stabilizing or not. In general, the vertical tail above the CG is laterally stabilizing. If we sum up all the side forces uh, that the aircraft experiences and located at the center line of the aircraft, which is above the CG, we can see that the weight of this aircraft would roll it back the other way around. So to sum up, the static lateral or roll stability would depend on the sign of CL beta. As a rule of thumb, negative CL beta is laterally stable while um, positive CL beta is unstable. It's worth noting here that having too much lateral stability um, 
is not, isn't necessarily a good thing. For example, um, a combination of high wing, wing sweep, and dihedral angle all could produce too much lateral stability, so the aircraft must be very difficult to maneuver. So in designing an aircraft, it has always been a trade-off between stability and maneuverability. Now, let's shift our discussion to roll control. Roll control is achieved by differential deflection of the ailerons. In other words, one aileron would go up while the other aileron goes down. This would create a rolling moment. When the aileron is deflected upwards, it disrupts the lift on that wing, while when the aileron is um, deflected downwards, it increases the lift on that wing. So, this differences in the lift on the left and right wing creates the rolling moment. Um, the wing with upward aileron deflection will experience less lift, so it will drop causing the aircraft to roll on that side. Uh, the aileron deflection is described by uh, this equation, which takes account of the differential deflection of the aileron. Uh, for sign convention, we have established previously that the control surface deflected upward is positive deflection while control surface deflected downward is negative deflection. So by this definition, positive aileron deflection is when um, the aileron on the left wing deflects upward while the aileron on the right wing deflects downward, just as shown on this diagram. The aircraft would roll right wing down and this is a positive rolling moment so we can also describe a positive aileron deflection as uh, one which results in a positive rolling moment. The equation of the rolling moment coefficient is shown uh, here with the addition of the aileron effectiveness term here. Cl beta uh, is the aileron uh, is the lateral static stability derivative while Cl delta A is the aileron effectiveness. Um, this equation down here describes the contribution of the aileron deflection towards uh, the rolling moment coefficient Cl. Uh, in this equation, the flap effectiveness tau can be computed the same way we computed the flap effectiveness of the elevator and the rudder. We use this graph. Um, that describes the value of the flap effectiveness based on the ratio of the size of the aileron with respect to the size of the wing. Um, the lift curve slope of the aileron, CL alpha here, can be computed by integrating over the region containing the aileron. So then we have uh, this equation that describes the aileron effectiveness. And it is just a function of um, the flat ratio and the lift curve slope of the wing. So remember at the beginning uh, of the lecture, um, I mentioned that when an aircraft rolls, it also experiences side slip. For example, when the aircraft rolls right wing down, it will also your nose either to the left or to the right. Um, if the aircraft banks to the right and its nose yaw to the right as well, which the nose yaw into the direction of the bank, we call this probus yaw. On the other hand, adverse yaw is when the nose yaws the opposite to the direction of the bank. Uh, for example, the aircraft banks to the right and its nose yaw to the left, away from the direction of the bank. Um, the aircraft would experience provis yaw or adverse yaw depending on what control surface is used to roll the aircraft. If ailerons are used for the rolling maneuver but without the use of other control surface, this would create an adverse yaw. This is because the downgoing aileron produces higher lift as well as higher drag um, than the other wing 
so it'll pull the aircraft in um, that direction so just to illustrate this wing has aileron deflected upwards and this wings aileron is deflected downwards so the lift on this wing is decreased um, so the aircraft starts to turn this way at the same time the drag on this wing is increased so it will pull the aircraft's nose that way in the opposite direction of the turn therefore the aircraft will turn this way while pointing its nose that way um, spoilers which is um, spoiler which is a control surface on the wing that has a different mechanism than the aileron how spoilers work is that it would be deflected upward to destroy some of the lift on that wing and also create drag on that wing so the wing would drop and at the same time pulls the nose of the aircraft into the direction of the turn this creates a proverse yaw Provost yaw or coordinated turn can also be achieved by using ailerons and rudder at the same time. The ailerons would create an adverse yaw, but this can be counteracted by rudder deflection that would yaw the aircraft's back into the direction of the turn. So these are the typical control surfaces on an aircraft's wing. The slats and flaps are used to increase the wing's angle of attack during takeoff and landing phases. The ailerons and spoilers are used for roll control so for rolling we can use either spoiler only or aileron spoiler coordination or aileron rudder coordination 